I'm Dr. Lori Mosley. I'm a veterinarian. Uh, I see patients from day to day, uh, one day a week. I do have a surgery day where I do um, basic surgery. Uh, seeing patients each day, I practice uh, preventative mes medicine. Uh, it's uh, really based on educating clients, um, helping uh, their pets live uh, long, healthy lives. Uh, we come in for an average appointment, usually about 30 minutes, and uh, find out how we've been doing. Uh, sometimes update vaccines, sometimes we do see sick patients. Uh, we look over the pet and then try to educate the client on things that they can do at home uh, to help uh, decrease the amount of visits in the future uh, and uh, make their pets feel better overall. Uh, an average work week for me, work day, uh, the work day can be anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. Average week is 40 to 45 hours. Uh, stress level, I would say it varies. Uh, we, uh, we do have a lot of fun in our job, um, but we do have some pretty stressful days, uh, especially with our really sick patients. Um, you really bond with your clients, and sometimes it's, it's really difficult uh, in giving bad news and, and things like that, but overall it is a very rewarding experience. On surgery days, you never really know what, uh, what you're going to have. We can do routine cases such as spays and neuters. Uh, we do occasionally get uh, puppy dogs that eat things they shouldn't, so it's kind of like a treasure hunt. We go in and we see what we can, what we can find, and we get some very interesting things in those cases. Um, and uh, we see, unfortunately, some more serious cases, oncology cases where we're removing tumors, and, and things like that, sending those things off to the lab to try to get the owner a diagnosis to determine the best course of action. Um, but it's a good even mix, I would say, routine uh, and then also more challenging cases. For requirements to be a veterinarian, uh, you need to have a bachelor's degree first, and that can be uh, associated uh, with anything from animal and dairy science, poultry science, which is what I got my bachelor's in, uh, you can also get a bachelor's in chemistry, biology, uh, and different other science-based uh, science majors. Uh, you then apply to vet school, uh, which is very competitive. Uh, for some people, it can take several tries to, to get in. Uh, once you get into that curriculum, it's a four-year program, and uh, you would graduate with, uh, with your DVM. Uh, if you choose to specialize, uh, you can go further and do an internship and a residency, uh, particularly in your area of interest, whether it be cardiology, uh, surgery, dermatology, oncology. Each discipline has its own, uh, own board certification that you can further specialize into. Um, I personally went a little bit further and uh, got a certification to be a veterinary acupuncturist uh, because I have an interest in alternative medicine. Um, as far as um, licensure, you do need to have um, a national uh, license where you take a national board and then you get a state license for whatever state that you live in. You, you do have to be pretty competitive. You've got to have good communication skills. Uh, you've got to have really strong math and science skills uh, and, um, and be very dedicated. Uh, there's definitely a weeding out process, so you definitely have to be dedicated. Um, things that I didn't expect coming into the job, um, I, th I think vet school pretty much prepared me for, for most everything. The only thing that I would say, uh, I, I do think they need to put more emphasis on client communication and interaction with clients. Uh, we often joke that uh, we do need more psychology classes because in dealing with the public in general, um, you know, you will be interacting with a client and sometimes uh, the emotions and things uh, that are, are displayed have absolutely nothing to do with the pet and uh, there may be other things going on in their life that can be affecting their decision making and things like that. So um, there's a lot more involved, I think, um, than just what's going on um, medically with the pet. We do have to take other things into consideration. The best parts of the job are easy to talk about because I really feel like there's a, a lot of great, uh, great parts to this job. Um, you know, getting to come to work every day and, and heal sick pets um, and make an owner very happy to take, uh, take their pet home, um, that's very rewarding. Um, you know, I think one of my favorite parts of the day, um, puppies and puppy breath and playing with kittens and watching them bat uh, a little cotton ball around on the table. Um, you can be in the worst mood ever and you get a puppy or kitten running around and it just absolutely makes your day. 
Um, we do have a lot of great clients. Um, it, it's really your clientele becomes, and your staff as well, becomes a family. Um, so it, it's kind of like coming in and visiting with your family every day. Uh, it, uh, that, that also is very rewarding. Um, you know, if you're the type of person that likes to meet new people, um, this is definitely the job to be in. Um, you have new clients come in every day from all walks of life, so it's always very interesting to meet new people, uh, make new friends. Uh, the worst part of the job, um, you know, I really love what I do, so that is a difficult one to answer. Uh, the hours can, uh, can at times, you know, be a little long. Uh, we probably work longer hours than, than your average profession, I would say, uh, and, uh, you know, definitely a um, little bit more time away from family, but then again, uh, it, it's extremely rewarding, so you have your trade-offs. Um, I think another difficult thing is, is sometimes we see cases of neglect uh, that, that is very difficult uh, to handle. Um, there are certainly proper channels to go through if you think you see something like that, but uh, there are some cases that are just really sad uh, and can be very upsetting. Uh, in this job, you know, euthanasia is, is something that a lot of people would also see as a very negative aspect of the job. Uh, it's certainly not our favorite thing to do. Um, but I do view it as a service that we can provide, um, you know, to, uh, uh, to help uh, improve, not necessarily improve, but kind of ease a, a bad situation or bad quality of life. Um, but uh, that can be very difficult um, day in and day out uh, to, to handle that sort of thing. There's definitely a lot of emotion involved. The other negative thing I would say is I've, I've heard a lot of um, young students come in thinking that this is going to be a, a type of, of get rich job and it's not. Uh, you shouldn't go into this field thinking that you're going to make tons of money. It's just not that type of field. Um, but it is extremely rewarding. You can definitely make a good living. Um, but, uh, but it's one of those things you've got to love what you do because you're not, uh, not going to get rich quick kind of thing. <laughs> Advice that I would give anyone looking into go, uh, going into this field, I think first off, if you're interested in applying for vet school, you need to work with someone first or at least spend some time in a veterinary practice to see if this is really what you want to do. Um, everyone can say that they have love for their, their dog or cat or pets in general, um, volunteering at shelters and things like that, but people don't realize that there's really more to our job than just playing with dogs and cats. Um, it can be very hard, it can be very demanding, uh, it does take a lot of dedication. So you need to be absolutely for sure that this is what you want to do uh, before you apply. And there are a certain number of hours uh, required uh, in a practice before you apply to vet school and, and each school is different and they would be able to, uh, to give you that information as well as age, uh, age restrictions for working in practices, each state is different. Um, but that's something that you should definitely look into if you're interested in applying. Um, and again, you know, I touched on before, as far as, um, uh, you know, working and that sort of thing, when you get out, you have to look at what you would have as far as student loan cost when you're done, uh, the cost, whether you're in state or out of state uh, tuition, those things do add up over time. And you have to look at what you're going to be making when you get out uh, and try to figure out if you're going to be able to, to cover that cost as well. A lot of veterinary students are surprised by that when they get out of school. Um, they're not making nearly as much as they thought they would, but yet they have this overwhelming student debt. Um, so looking at debt, looking at scholarships that you can get and that sort of thing, um, that's definitely important before you apply to look at those types of things.